there's this book that's really popular. It's become so popular in the past couple of years. It's called Atomic Habits. And, and he says to have real behavior, behavioral change, the, the most important thing is to consider yourself to have your identity as a person who does this activity. So it's like, it's, it would be kind of like, it's not like you learn languages, it's that you're a language learner. Your identity is, is, is as a language learner, not just some person that does some kind of activity, right? And this mm -hmm. ensures kind of long-term success that you will continue to, to do this behavior. And um, I know this is one thing that I really believe in, I think you've talked about before, the idea of having um, a lifestyle of languages and language learning and I know in my life I'm I feel very lucky at this period because you know I teach English that's my uh, form of income then I live in a foreign country Mexico where I'm able to walk outside and you know practice Spanish or meet people speak Spanish and then I speak Russian as my main act I mean I study Russian as my main activity and I think wow I mean my whole life is built around like this whole language thing um, do you have a similar situation or what do you think about the idea of lifestyle and language learning? Um, as uh, somebody who doesn't live in a foreign country, I have to create this uh, environment, language environment, uh, artificially. Uh, and, you know, I think if you do this right, you can actually make this environment more efficient in uh, in a way than the whole living uh, in a country because right now I'm listening to whenever I got time I walk around and listening to Polish and uh, sometimes it's five or even more hours a day like for the the during the last week was every day several hours listening and uh, 30 minutes or an hour of speaking if I were to live in Poland and uh, doesn't and uh, doesn't create this environment around myself, maybe it wouldn't even be possible to listen to Polish this much uh, if I don't have a job there or if I don't study there. If I just walk and you know just listen to people speak around. It wouldn't be it would be like five or ten percent of what I can do actually here in Russia you exactly. know so uh, people who uh, move to a foreign country and you know that doesn't force this uh, language input doesn't create it maybe they have less practice and less they progress in the language uh, less than uh, can progress somebody who creates it artificially that's something that's I realized recently that actually you can learn language faster in your own country uh, than somebody who lives there and doesn't actually uh, create uh, this practice opportunity. So when I learn a language, always I'm tr I try to listen it, listen to it a lot. And this is like the same. Well, basically, of course, you don't do the grocery shopping and uh, this basic stuff but you can learn it very fast whenever you get to the country of course but the the whole core the ba the um, the whole core of the language you can learn it in your own in your own country uh so yeah i create this environment and then also i i'm subscribed to uh youtubers in all the languages i learned uh, Instagrammers uh, and um, I have friends from different countries I have students and uh, during the class I translate something in their language I help them so my my life is also uh, uh, work uh, this way that um, languages are uh, around always around um, and I actually don't don't have to of course i create this environment but once i created it and made it a habit i just don't think about it it's absolutely. my life absolutely yeah and i completely understand what you're saying i don't know if you noticed this but um you know some time ago i had this idea to 
to study a language 40 hours in one week, right? So I did it last year. Then, you mm -hmm. know, I said that we were, I was going to do it again. And it just actually happened last week. And lots of people online really got interested. It's called the 40 hour, seven day mm -hmm. language challenge. And basically you spend time with your language well, 40 hours or as much as you can do. And, uh, you know, I tweeted something. I said, you know, I live in Mexico, but actually it feels like Russia, you know, because I mm -hmm. literally created the um, immersion environment. And I agree. I mean, you can, you can learn like the base or the main part of the language and, you know, on your own, you fill in the details when you need them. Mm -hmm. There you go, because I live in Mexico. And, um, well, now that we're in this quarantine thing, it feels like kind of I live in Mexico less than normal because I'm spending mm -hmm. much more time in my apartment. Uh, I'm seeing people a lot less. So I have a lot less uh, contact with people in Spanish than I ever have. You know, I'm doing my English classes, then I study Russian. So sometimes my, like, I don't get to speak that much Spanish and it's surprising for someone that lives in the country. But just like how you said, I mean, you walk on the street, maybe you hear some people chatting, but this is like mm -hmm. not enough, you know. In of course. So right. It's yeah. about creating your environment at the end of the day. Right. And also, if you uh, move to a new country, it's a bit of a challenge to find uh, friends. And uh, once you find them, it is. you you cannot meet them every day for five hours because they work and they study. Uh, and here you have podcasts who you can listen to 10 hours a day, um, every day. So mm. basically this artificial thing is if we work on it, it could be more efficient than the real life environment in a language. In right. A country. I think that you can get more language inputs being in your in your country or in another country. But I, I do think that there are some kind of um, emotional aspects that help about living in the country, you know? Of the course. idea of emotional connection, being mm -hmm. with people. Um, so it's not like one thing is 100% better than the other, but in terms of language, yeah. you can get a lot of that language in you. But You um, have more motivation when you see everybody uh, speak that language and when you see it's written everywhere, of course. because sometimes you can ask yourself why am i study russian why am i studying russian being in russia and not knowing where i can go to poland uh because it's closed uh so yeah but it's uh you know um it depends on how um, what motivation you have uh if it's a strong motivation then it doesn't matter where you live if uh, if not maybe a trip to that country and uh um, you know, spending some time there doesn't necessarily um, moving there, just spending some time, like with my trip to Italy, can give you a lot of motivation. Of course. And I think I would like to think that whatever country I would spend a significant amount of time in, I would learn the language because, you know, one thing that's really motivating when you're in the country is when all these things are happening in a different language and people have to explain it to you and like, your language or in another language that's actually kind of frustrating and you're like mm -hmm. you want to be a part of it and you know experience it but um that's one thing so um you have learned quite a few romance languages and uh, i was watching in one of your videos that you mentioned that even though that you don't study let's say I don't know, regularly, let's say Portuguese, that by your knowledge or studying of other Romance languages, it has even helped you with, let's say Portuguese or some other languages. Can you think of ways that that happened? Because I thought that was interesting. You, you mentioned about improving uh, your foreign languages by, by just simply, you know, having interaction or studying other languages in that language family. Can you talk a little bit about that? 